Hi, and welcome to Step Up AT's videos on assistive technology strategies. In this video, we will be discussing levels of prompts that can be used when introducing AT. This is the bottle for cow. Press the bottle. We also have videos on behavior specific praise, adult modeling to support language development, peer modeling, and wait time. So be sure to check those out. Good. Prompting is a go-to instructional strategy almost all teachers rely on to help children become as independent as possible in a given task. There are different levels of prompting from most to least supported. We call this prompt hierarchy. This hierarchy provides a systematic way to determine or adjust how much help we give a child, where the ultimate goal is that the child is able to complete the targeted task with as little assistance from the teacher as possible. At the top of the prompt hierarchy, we have full physical prompting. The child performs a task while the teacher holds onto their hand or wrist to do it with them. The teacher can gradually change the location or intensity of the physical prompt as she introduces AT tools to assist the child. For example, if the child first requires hand over hand support to control the pencil, you can offer a pencil grip or add visual guidelines to the paper using wiki sticks so that over time you may be able to provide support at the elbow, the shoulder, sitting next to the child, then moving away entirely as the child improves his or her grasping skills. Physical prime prompting. The child performs the task after the teacher moves them toward it. This includes teacher proximity, support at the elbow, hand over hand. Go. For example, the teacher touches their elbow to get them to pick up a pencil grip or magnet to spell out their name. Modeling. The child performs the task after the teacher shows them how by doing the task first. Avery's doing the shark. For example, the teacher uses an AAC device to make a request, then provides the AAC device to the child and asks him or her to do the same. I'm going to show you how to press it. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Direct verbal. The child performs the task after explicitly being told what to do. And now we put it away. For example, the teacher describes to the child what he needs to do. Everybody ready? We're going to move to the carpet. Gesturing. The child performs a task after the teacher points to an item, location, or person. For example, the teacher points to her ear to imply it's time to listen. And wear your ears. Touch your ears. Indirect verbal prompting. The child performs a task after the teacher asks an open-ended question that prompts the child to think about the action. All done. And now it's time for eating. For example, circle time just ended. The children in the class get up from the carpet and begin to transition to their respective chairs or desks. One child seems confused or is wandering around the classroom. The teacher uses an indirect verbal prompt. Do we run inside the class? No. We walk inside the class. Independent. The child is able to perform the task independently with no help or hints of any kind. If you would like to review the different prompt levels, we have attached a link below to the handout that describes in greater detail the prompt hierarchy. There is no specific order when using prompts. Sometimes children will need different levels of prompting depending on the activity or task. Similarly, the use of adaptive equipment or AT may help the child perform a task with less prompting required. ¿Qué sigue, Mateo? ¿Qué vamos a hacer ahora? The use of photographs, visual cues, or written text can also serve as a prompting support, especially for children with communication difficulties. To maximize the effectiveness of prompting, keep in mind the following. Start with the least amount of prompting possible. Begin with minimal assistance and only add additional prompts as needed. Start off by offering one verbal request. If needed, add additional prompts. The benefit to this method is that with every additional prompt, the child gets to learn through repetition and practice of the skill. Reduce the prompts as the child learns the skill. When children first learn a new skill, they may need physical cues, modeling, and verbal prompts. 
but as they practice that skill over time, the prompts could be adjusted or not needed at all. Aileen, remember, it's time to check off your schedule. Come with me. For example, when introducing Irene to a new visual schedule to assist with transition, it may first require a physical prompt where the teacher walks her over to the posted schedule and places her hand over the appropriate symbol to check it off. Then, as Irene begins to learn the skills of going to her schedule at the end of each activity, the teacher could transition to a modeling prompt where another child shows her how to check off her visual schedule at the end of each activity. As Irene becomes more independent in checking off her schedule, she might just require an additional prompt from the teacher. Remember, after you put away your toys, to go check your schedule. Offer some wait time before offering more assistance. When providing a verbal prompt, wait at least three to five seconds before repeating the Irene, verbal prompt or providing another type of prompt. Irene, what comes next? This gives a child some time to process your request and think about how they wish to respond. Finally, discourage prompt dependency. Instead, encourage the child to practice the task at a level that requires problem solving and promotes learning. For you. Good job. All children need our help to learn. Use a variety of prompts as an instructional strategy supports the scaffolding of new skills and increases a child's independence. Keep in mind prompting is a fluid process that looks differently depending on the task and the child. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check out stepupat.com for more resources and information on using assistive technology in the classroom and at home to increase early literacy skills.